What's going on guys? Alex with 814 EDC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Oaksworks Solar Storm EDX. Uh, so this is in via the Lefty Pass Iron Group. I think this might be one of Kevin's personal knives. Um, I can remember when he got this in. I think it was via pre-order. Um, and I forgot that I was on the list for it until I got it in the mail, I think, one day. I think that's how, I, or someone messaged me about it and I kind of forgot about it, um, one of the two. But I got it in and I didn't uh, film a unboxing for it. Uh, I think I just had, you know, not a whole lot of time within the next like day or two of me getting it in. And I didn't feel like, you know, waiting to, to do it. So I just unboxed it and I've had it for about a week and a half or so. But uh, it's finally time for me to do my full review on it. Uh, and it's a cool little knife. It's definitely, in my opinion, kind of a gentlemanly EDC. Um, but I've really, really enjoyed it. And uh, this is the first Oaksworks blade design that I've had. Actually, it's false. Um, the first Oaksworks blade um, design that I've had was via the Gophers um, knives that I got for my father-in-law and brother-in-law um, back during Christmas. I did a review, sort of uh, overview video of that on the channel, and uh, those were both Oaksworks designs, I think. Um, but this is like the first true EDC knife um, design that I've got to check out that he did, and uh, I have really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's, a, it's a definitely a cool knife. Uh, they are made by Riot, I believe, and the, the build quality is very well done. There's a lot of good materials with it, um, and overall, I just I think it's a good knife. So jumping right into materials, uh, this is a titanium bodied knife with a, I believe, a desert, um, or an olive drab micarta, excuse me. Yes, olive drab, because according to the website, they have, um, on oaksworks.com, he has four different variations available. He has a... Um, olive drab micarta which is this one he has a black carbon fiber twill version a blue arctic storm fat carbon version and a copper camo fat carbon version um, so this is the only micarta one available and you can tell that it's kind of darkened up from people carrying it and uh, from people handling it but it's a overall a pretty small knife you have a milled titanium puck clip back here i love the the milling that's on there i think it looks really good just adds a little bit of pop of, um, you know, aesthetic in my opinion. Same on this side, the um, sort of the bolster area on the knife has the same style of uh, milling that is on the pot clip. Has a flipper, has a backspacer that is titanium as well, has a lanyard um, tube. It is dead centered. Um, there is a relief cut right here. It's on bearings. The blade steel is M390. Um, say it right, right there, M390. Hopefully you guys were able to see that. Uh, you have a nice forward finger troll up here. And it's kind of a harpoon style drop point. Um, you kind of have a swedge with a harpoon built in here. And it has a hollow grind, which is very, very thin behind the edge. Um, definitely a shining star in uh, this knife. Here is Oaksworks EDX right there. The machine satin, um, or belt satin, I think, from Riot is very, very nicely done. For internal milling, there is not really much milling going on at all, uh, but that doesn't really matter because this knife is very, very lightweight, um, especially with the micarta, the, or the titanium that's milled out to put the micarta in. Micarta is a very lightweight material, um, so I don't think that it's necessarily a need for them to mill out anything because I mean I think we'll try to look on the website right here I'm not much of a specs guy but sometimes if I have it up I'll look real quick for you guys um, I don't know if it's gonna say it or not uh, yeah wait so uh, weight is just under three ounces so this is a sub three ounce blade um, for titanium in my car that is incredible uh, so again the internal milling is not really needed on this in my opinion uh, I think it's, you know, an adequate weight for what it is without the milling. Um, it's on bearings. And I think that is all for material. So got a little bit of dust in there. We're going to jump on to action. Uh, the flipper tab is kind of stout. It's definitely not super, super pointy or super, super proud of the knife. But it, it works phenomenally well. Oh, it's a frame lock. I kind of forgot to mention that. Uh, it is a, oh, it's, it's kind of a frame lock or like a, a subframe lock, bolster lock type of knife. And um, we'll see what the website qualifies it as. Just using the website for all kinds of things today, guys. 
Um, doesn't say on the website, I guess, but. An inset? No, I don't know. I, I would qualify this as kind of, I guess, a bolster lock because of the whole, um, it's like cut out here from the micarta. The micarta doesn't move. So I would qualify it as a bolster lock, but I could be wrong. could be a frame lock. But the action is very snappy. Uh, the detent is tuned, you know, to perfection. Very hard to get this knife to fail. I've tried numerous times. I mean, right there, I, I tried pretty damn hard to be really slow with it. That you can, I mean, if you really push down slow on it, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to fire out. Uh, and the closing action, it's not a guillotine drop shot or anything like that by any means, but um, drops and hits your nail. Well, the, the flipper tab drops and hits your nail, and it just takes a few shakes to close. Or you can go one big shake and it'll close. Uh, and I'm not typically like a flipper only type of guy. I love having like a flipper with a, uh, a hole or thumb studs or a folder, something that I can middle finger flick with. Um, so I tend to stay away kind of from just a flipper only knife, but I can definitely appreciate a well-tuned flipper only knife. Uh, and I think this definitely qualifies as one because it is, I mean, it's, it's really just fun to play with. It's fun to just continually to do this every single time. Has nice acoustics too. You can get your, just like that, you can get your, uh, if you, if, excuse me, if you get your thumb out of the way is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it'll swing past your thumb, but you have to be careful because it might hit your cuticle, which it has done to me a few times. Um, as long as you're careful and, you know, making sure it's not going to cut you every single time, um, you'll be okay. But uh, even with it hitting your nail pretty, pretty soon after you close it, as long as you get past the detent ramp, um, just very, very smooth. And I am, you know, I'm not the first one to get this knife in. It's been passed around a few times, so it has definitely been carried and used. So it's, it's definitely broken in, but, um, I think I brought it up in the review of the contact I did. I mentioned that, um, you know, there's, you can either like it or not like it for, you know, being down the line sometimes, but I tend to like it because, um, you know, it gets, it gets, gives the knife time to be broken in and to, you know, be used and to get tuned kind of the right way. Uh, and there's no blade play at all. So this thing is, you know, locked up solid and it still drops pretty smoothly. It's almost kind of glassy like, and I don't, I don't tend to use that term a lot. Um, but, uh, the action is, is very, very good on this knife. So, um, but for a re-out made knife, you know, you would kind of expect something like that. Um, but yeah, so next up is Ergos. And this is a very small knife, like I said, um, but I can still, without using the troy up here, I can still get all four fingers on the knife. You have the slipper tab, so it's a nice natural restriction point. You don't have any jipping at all up here, but I can just grab on. Uh, and I just have a little bit of the knife sticking out, but it's very comfortable. I don't feel like overly cramped or anything like that. Um, but nine times out of 10 that I'm gonna be using this knife, I'm going to be choking up and using this choil. It's very comfortable. And you just get a you know much better grip on it. You can kind of ride your thumb up here onto the uh, the poon area, as Kev likes to say, the harpoon area here. Um, kind of use it as a ramp if you're going to be doing precise cuts with it. And I mean, to me, like this is just locked into my hand. It's not going anywhere. Uh, that you know that type of ergonomic advantage coupled with the beautiful hollow grind that is on here. I mean, this thing is just an EDC machine. Uh, it'll cut anything that you throw at it. It'll, you know, do it very precisely. You have a nice tip is, um, you know, not super, super chunky, but comes down to a nice tip there. As long as you're not going to be prying with it, I think it's going to be you know, adequate for anything you need to pierce into. Um, but yeah, the, this kind of is a, I've reviewed a couple knives today. The, the first two being the uh, Rosecraft blades. And they were very ergonomically friendly and, I, friendly. and I just I feel like it's on a kind of an ergo trip today because every knife that I've handled, I've said of how, you know, how good it feels in hand and how awesome the ergos are. And I, you know, this is definitely continuing with the trend. So um, ergos are fantastic. Uh, next up is carry. And this doesn't have a deep, 
you know, deep carry clip or anything like that. But for a milled clip, it works pretty well. It comes up to about here in the pocket. Um, you know, and I tend to not like having this much sticking up out of my pocket, especially with these like pointy ended knives. Um, it's just not my favorite thing. Uh, I think maybe he could have bumped it up a little bit on the um, scale for it to carry a little bit deeper in pocket, but that's just me being nitpicky. But the actual pocket clip works very, very well. I love how it kind of has a little bit of a curve to it. I love the milling that's done on it. And it goes in and out of pocket very well because underneath it you have micarta. Um, and it doesn't have, you know, some clips like this are really, really tight and you have to like pry to get your pants underneath it. Um, but this goes in and out of pocket super, super easily. Carries very, very well. Uh, the knife is very small. I mean, it kind of, most of it disappears into my hand. Uh, it's very lightweight, even without that inter internal milling going on. So, sorry guys, I'm just really thirsty today. I typically don't do, you know, a ton of different reviews all in order, um, but it is raining out today. So I wanted to get a lot of reviews banged out that I needed to get done. So my throat's starting to get a little strained. Um, but yeah, carries very, 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 very well, excuse me, dropping in your pocket. You do have a flipper tab down here to worry about, um, but there's only two pe or two pieces, um, two things of jimping down here on the flipper tab. So it's not like going to be, you know, catching or tearing up your hand or anything like that. Um, and it just, it's a very elegant knife um, and it carries very, very well. One thing that I forgot to mention with the Ergos, with having this milling up here on the bolster area, when you're doing something like a pinch grip, um, you know, I, I tend to either do this if I'm like ripping through a package or I'll do it like this. If I want a little bit more control, put my pointer finger up here. Um, having this grip up here with the milling makes a very, very, uh, makes it a pleasurable experience. And it adds, you know, that safety of having something there to grip onto, and it's not going to slide out of your hands. It's not going to, um, you know, be a, be at risk of slipping or anything like that. I just, I forgot to mention that. I wanted to uh, toss it in before um, I finished up the video, but this leads me to my final category of price point and what I recommend this knife. According to Oaksworks website, this version specifically goes for $340 and the um, carbon fiber and fat carbon versions go for $360. Uh, and I, I will say $340 is a little bit high in my opinion. Uh, I know they were a little bit cheaper on the pre-order, I think Kevin said in one of those videos, they might have been like 320 or 330. Um, but in my opinion, 340 is a little bit high. Uh, it's not that the build quality is in there because it is. Riot does a kick-ass job of making knives, of uh, producing knives. Um, I just haven't, you know, the, I don't even, maybe 250 I'd be more comfortable spending this on. Um, I think between 250 and 300. I just think above 300 for it being a flipper only knife. I mean, it makes me pause, and I know it's an Oaksworks, you know, style, which he does very, very good work, and I, I absolutely love the knife. It's a fantastic knife, fantastic design. The ergos are fantastic, um, so I can recommend the knife in that situation um, because all the materials, I mean, you're getting M390, titanium, micarta, on bearings. You know, ergos are just to die for, fantastic. Um, hollow grind, which is very, very cool, very, very nice. Uh, and to me, this is just like an ultimate kind of gentleman's folder. Um, this would definitely be a knife in my collection that I would love to toss in pocket when I'm going out to dinner, uh, going to a wedding, I'm going to church, something like that. Uh, you know, not that it can't handle the, you know, rigors of an EDC knife that people might want to put it through. But uh, to me, it just, it kind of screams like very, very elegant gentleman's folder, very, very elegant EDC knife. Um, so I can recommend the knife you know, in all those different situations and all the different things that are going into it, I think it's a fantastic knife. I just think 340 might be a little bit too high in my opinion. Uh, I think, you know, 250 to 300 at most is a better category, you know, a better area for it to live in. Um, but I would not knock anybody for wanting to pick one of these up. Um, I just can't, you know, in my personal opinion, I just, I think three, 340 might be a little bit too high, but, um, you know, it's a very, very nice knife. The action is very, very good. Ergos are good. Materials are good. Everything about it's good. I mean, I think this is a very positive review. Um, but yeah, so that's really all I have for today, guys. I uh, hope I was able to give a um, good, you know, my good thoughts and opinions on this knife. If you're interested in it, I will leave a link down below to Oaksworks Style Blade. I don't know why I keep saying style. 
I kept saying that for Rosecraft style blades too. For Oaksworks website, um, according to the website, this specific you know variant, there are four available. Um, so if you see this video and you're kind of interested in one, definitely go check this one out because um, there are you know very few left. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed having this in. This is my first Oaksworks um, design that I've checked out as an EDC knife. And uh, yeah, I'm glad Kevin offered it up to some of us to check out. So thank you, Kev, if you're watching this. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you, you know, tuning in and checking out my stuff every time I post. Um, you guys know who you are. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be all for today. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.